And now for a very slow investigation into something very quick. Almost a year ago, some observant viewers drew Media Watch's attention to something funny about Channel 10's broadcast of the ARIA Awards. The nominees are Goichi, Mixed Blood, the John Butler Trio, Brand National. Did you see it? For two frames, about a twelfth of a second, the screen was filled by the logo of one of the ARIA sponsors, the Toyota Yaris. Here it is in slow motion. The same technique was used 45 times during the two-hour show to flash up the logos of various sponsors, including KFC, Big Pond and Chupa Chups. Most of them lasted only one or two frames, making them all but invisible. That's what's called subliminal advertising. And as Monica Attard pointed out last November, it appeared to be in clear breach of the Commercial Television Code of Practice, which says that broadcasters should not use or involve any technique which attempts to convey information to the viewer by transmitting messages below or near the threshold of normal awareness. It'd be interesting to see how the broadcasting regulator rules on it if any complaint gets that far. The broadcasting regulator is ACMA, the Australian Communications and Media Authority. It did, in fact, receive nine formal complaints about the ARIA broadcast, and last week, after a 10-month investigation, it found that... The licensees are in breach of Clause 1.8.4 of the Code. ACMA has slapped Network 10 on the wrist and told it not to do it again. 10 has told MediaWatch that... We fully accept the ruling. So, that's that, you might think. No more subliminal ads. Well, yes and no. Because after painstaking study, ACMA's come up with a bizarre piece of reasoning. It's ruled that a two-frame flash, like this, is near the threshold of normal awareness and therefore outlawed. But a three-frame flash, like this, is at or above that threshold. And in ACMA's world, something that is at or above the threshold isn't near the threshold. So that this Yaris flash, which appeared later in the ARIA broadcast and lasts six frames, doesn't breach the commercial TV code of practice and is perfectly OK. And that worries groups like the parents' jury, which is lobbying to reduce advertising of junk food to children. This ruling opens the door for advertisers to promote unhealthy food and drink to children with a new, subversive tool. They may well be right. Rove McManus, for example, still likes flashing sponsors' names. As well as the ARIA Awards and his chat show, Rove's company produces a family quiz show for 10. Now, watch this carefully. I'm going to make your $10,000, $25,000. Oh. This is a very important part of the show. Important is right. Did you see it? Watch the $25,000 graphic spin over when we play it again. So we're going to make your $10,000, $25,000. Oh. This is a very important part of the show. Get it this time? Not an ad for junk food, but for a rather expensive toy, Nintendo DS. Before ACMA's ruling, Ten might have been worried that that was in breach of the code of practice, but not anymore. ACMA's report described content being on screen for three or more frames as being either at or above the threshold of normal awareness. The Nintendo DS shots on Fifth Grader are clearly visible. They appear on screen for 12 frames and are also accompanied by a sound effect to increase their impact. So, expect to see a lot more messages from sponsors flashed up on your screen from now on. And remember, they can be as short as this. If you couldn't read it, download it from our website and slow it down. <laughs>